Hi everyone and welcome to a new podcast episode. This is the New Leaf Podcast and I am a Carmen, the designer behind New Leaf Designs and it has been a while since I recorded a podcast episode, mainly because of the knit-along that is going on right now, the Scapeless knit-along of 2022. I think my last podcast was in December. <laughs> It's just been so busy. So um, I have not pulled out everything I have knit since December because that podcast episode would be three hours long. But um, I have pulled out some uh, projects that I would like to show you. And I really don't know where I left off last time. So I'll just dive right in with the... Uh, knit along cushion. So um, today marks the start of week six. It is Wednesday, uh, March 30th, and on Wednesday, a new pattern of the uh, Scapius Cal is released. So uh, we're knitting two cushions. This is the second cushion, and each week, um, a new part of the cushion is released, and each cushion is divided into five parts. Um, and the cal, so I'm calling it the Scapius Cal 2022, uh, but it's also called the Sassanach Cal because it's uh, inspired after Outlander. And this is the second cushion, which uh, is the Claire cushion. And the first cushion that we did was the Jamie cushion, and I'll put a picture of that up on the screen. And you can see that for the Jamie cushion there is this, um, there are three tartan, or like tartan gingham, um, what's another word, argyle patterns in there and the middle is this really beautiful tartan um, plate or plaid, I, I don't know how it's pronounced, but I really really love those prints. And then for Claire I decided to go with her herbal kind of knowledge and uh, put a lot of floral patterns in there so really looking forward to this clover pattern but in week uh, six so this week we are knitting this portion so we're doing the cast on and then uh, doing this fun little pattern that each of the cushions uh, starts and also ends with and then a really I really like this pattern. It's really easy to remember and uh, it looks really beautiful. And then some vines with berries, which is also really fun. And then in the next week we'll have this tartan um, and then the beloved clovers. Um, and here is another traditional Fair Isle XO chart. So this one is a little bit more difficult to see, but um, if you use a bit of an imagination, you can see an X here, and then the flowers are O's. And there are two or three patterns, no, at least three XO patterns in the Jamie cushion, where you can also see an X and an O. And you see that a lot in traditional Fair Isle patterns, uh, and they're called the XO patterns or the OXO patterns. Um, and I thought to incorporate a lot of those in the Jamie cushion because Jamie is Scottish. And then since since Claire, I don't know if she adopts the, the Scottish nationality in the in the story, I don't think so, but um, as she becomes a little Scottish, um, I've included an exo pattern and then a sort of tartan pattern here as well, uh, but then still the English rose um, and some more fun patterns. So we'll be needing on this cushion from weeks 6 to 10 um, and it's been so fun so far uh, and I'm loving just seeing everyone knit along and it is so mind-blowing to me how many people are joining the knit along and from so many countries around the world. Um, it's it's really the best reward for my work. Um, I've been uh, working on this design for I think uh, a year and a half or close to two years, but uh, you know, so that encompasses the the first thoughts of the design and then the making of the charts and then planning where they go and then you know leaving some charts off and and then the color planning, which was 
kind of difficult, but uh, I'm really glad how it worked out because I, I want the colors to be um, nicely divided in the cushions. And, uh, and then the testing process, and then um, testing again, and uh, ordering the kits, and <laughs> making sure there is enough yarn. Um, yeah, it, it was just um, a huge process, but uh, seeing everyone knit along on it now, it's it's been really really rewarding and i've been also doing a lot of uh workshops so as you as you may or may not know so uh the scapius uh, cal we're uh, knitting the cushions with scapius metropolis which is my favorite yarn and you can use it for you know not only socks but also sweaters and scarves and hats and cushions and um i've been teaching some workshops and we've been also using shapes metropolis and so i'm just teaching the workshop on kind of a miniature cushion isn't it but um it's just on this project because you're knitting it in the round and casting it on seamlessly um, you're using the same techniques as for the cushion. Uh, so we're using uh, Scapius Metropolis and in most of the workshops we've been able to use the uh, color pack. I have it somewhere here as well. Um, but uh, there is a Scapius Metropolis color pack which has 80 balls, so 80 colors, and each ball is 10 grams, so it's really really cute. Um, so you get these really... oops these really tiny balls um, let's see I have another one in progress here and these are the balls included with the color pack so you get 80 of these all in different colors um, yeah and this is another one uh, so I'm knitting a new one for each workshop and I'm um, thinking it will be a really fun collage in the end. So I think I have about um, 18 workshops in total and already it's it's really fun to see all of the different um, color combinations. And um, yeah, this has been a really fun project. So uh, I might you know, collage them all together, like sew them all together and then either maybe frame them uh, or because I was thinking of using them as like a cushion pad or something, but um, I also don't want to use them. I just want to look at them. So, uh, so yeah, I might, uh, I might frame them instead. So, um, yeah, but I've been really enjoying the workshops and I have another one coming up this Friday uh, and then I have two workshops next week but one is the knit along workshop and one is the, my cozy moment shawl um, and then I have several more over the next few weeks with the last one being on April 29th and for now I'm just teaching the workshops in the Netherlands and in Belgium because um, yeah due to traveling distance. Uh, these workshops are already sometimes a bit far, <laughs> but um, yeah, and also just because of language, because I would be able to teach in Germany, you know, travel-wise, but um, yeah, um, I don't know if a workshop in English would be um, yeah, w uh, would have enough participants in Germany. I don't know. And my German is quite okay, but um, my my German uh, knitting vocabulary isn't so. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, I've been having lots of fun with that, and I've also been attending a workshop recently by Mr. Ned Bear, or you might know him as Wim. <laughs> I'm saying that as if it's an English word, Wim. Um, Vim and Dennis, they have written this book um, and two other books so far and working on their newest book. So they are very, very busy. Uh, Mr. Knitbear 
This is Mr. Nedbear and this is Dennis. And so this book, I'm not sure if it's available in English, I think it's just available in Dutch. Uh, so it's about knitting uh, kitchen cloths and um, oven mitts and other things you might use in the kitchen. And, oops, my workshop sheet. And um, they are really, really fun. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, Vim taught the workshop on double knitting, and um, so, but they have lots of projects in here. Look at this cute one. This looks like a memories blanket, um, but um, they've made placemats here, and it's just really, really fun. And I think this one is double knitted as well. And with double knitting, you also use at least two colors, and then on the uh, flip side of the same project, you see the image in the reverse colors. And, oh my god, look at this one. So, Vin uh, is almost always wearing this kind of checkerboard um, shirt, and one of the patterns in here, the buffalo plaid, is also a checkerboard print <laughs> and actually that's the one that we knit during the workshop so here's my tiny swatch so it's mostly rust colored on this side and then mostly pink on this side and i think it looks really really fun and the the borders are all multi colored and um yeah it was it was a really interesting technique but also um kind of difficult i must say because uh <laughs> and you know i could do it it's not it's not as if the technique itself is difficult but uh keeping track of where you are in the pattern that was difficult for me um because you're knitting one stitch of the front and then one stitch in the back and then um, you kind of have to see, okay, which color do I need to use for this stitch and which color do I need to use for that stitch. And um, it's really handy to use a lot of stitch markers because I was staring at my work and just like, where am I? What am I doing? And uh, it was just a little bit confusing, but I got there. <laughs> Um, I would say don't stop in the middle of a row because that can get really confusing and I had to do some um, some fixing of a previous row so but I'm really happy how it turned out and I especially like the cast on because it is it's really neat and um, and I've seen projects where you also have that very neat line on the side. So here we are just knitting the first and last stitch with both colors, uh, which, which creates a really sturdy fabric. Um, but I know there's a way of having a very clean edge there as well. Uh, but then you have to make sure the colors kind of anchor in each other because otherwise you'll be knitting two separate flaps or are you i don't know <laughs> it's still very confusing but it's also really really fun so double knitting um if you know how to read dutch i really recommend this book you can get it almost anywhere um in the netherlands and i don't mean in the supermarket but um yeah in a lot of uh knitting stores and um, yeah, also check out their um, their sock books because um, they have two books before this and I think they were both socks. I think uh, the second one is Sock You Too. I know, uh, I know. Oh, and the first one was Happy Socks, I think. Happy Socks and Sock You Too. So those might be in English, I don't know. Um, yeah, but it was, it was really, really fun. Um, and yeah, it was really nice to attend a workshop again and to not have to manage and organize everything myself. Um, 
yeah, and then talking about new things because double knitting was a really new technique for me. Um, I also have had the pleasure of working with some new yarn and you might have seen this. Uh, so Scapius have come out with a new yarn. It's called Terrazzo and Terrazzo is, um, um, I think it's an Italian technique of, um, and I think it originated with marble. So you see like a slab of marble and then colored uh, rocks in there. It's, <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it. It's like uh, one main color and then dots or flecks um, speckled around in there. And I think that's a nod to the tweed that's in here and I really really love it so this one this is a rust colored yarn it's called Mogano and it's got white black and blue specks and and I've used a bit of this this is called Sassolino um, it also has white um, blue and black but the blue is slightly more vibrant and then I have these as well um, and I wanted to show you the swatch that I knit with the pink one so uh, because they recommend four millimeter on the ball band just checking that yes four millimeter uh, so I use that but um, for my current project I'm using three and a half because I'm a really loose knitter and this is also Kind of more flowy than I would have wanted. I think for a shawl it would be uh, great, but for a sweater I think I would like some more structure in there. Um, yeah, so this is just a cable that I designed and um, I really like it. So I'm thinking of a sweater with just this cable down the front. Um, that would be really nice, but um, I have so many ideas right now, so that design will have to wait for a while. But I have cast on for uh, another design, which I will be publishing very soon, and uh, it's a hat. Um, and I'm using the tubular cast on for it, and I've done some swatches here, so these are swatches for the tubular cast on um, and I'm doing a different cast on method than the regular tubular cast on because as I understand the tubular cast on is usually done with a provisional cast on first and then knitting in just one direction and then picking up the stitches from the provisional cast on but uh, for this pattern I'm doing tubular cast on with Judy's magic cast on and uh, I, I've uh, rec recorded a tutorial video and I'll be publishing that tomorrow I think on my patreon page and it will eventually be available on my YouTube page as well um, and this is just a swatch I did with um, German twisted cast on which is really stretchy but also um, less neat than the tubular cast on because here it's just it's just a beautiful cast on edge I really really like it um, and you can see or barely but I've put a lifeline in here um, I have a tutorial as well for how to put a lifeline in but it's really simple just thread all your stitches onto some scrap yarn and then continue knitting. Um, it's really handy for when you're about to do something that you don't know if it's going to work um, and you want to be able to rip back. It's, it's, if, you, um, if you've done a lot of video games you can call this like a checkpoint um, because you can come back to that. Um, and because um, I wanted to I wanted to design this really simple ribbed hat but kind of like a hipster hat so um, so with the decreases on each side but uh, I need to revise the decreases because look at this it looks like <laughs> see it looks like I'm wearing like cat ears um, while you know if, if it's laying flat it's 
it's a flat line, but if I'm wearing it, it's not a flat line. So, yeah, I'll have to do a more tapered uh, cast off, I think. Or just leave it be and sew those together, but yeah, uh, I'll just uh, I'll just pull it out, I think. Um, and I was surprised that I still have this much left of the first ball. I thought I was definitely going to break into my second ball for the hat, but I didn't. So uh, yeah, this is a very roomy hat indeed. Look at how much um, you know fold over I have. What's that called? Look how wide the brim is. That's what I mean. Um, yeah, and it's just really, really nice. And uh, the reason why, because I know you might be thinking that, why are you knitting a hat in almost summer? But uh, we have a convertible car and um, yeah, you really need to wear a hat and all of my hats are kind of wintry. Uh, you know, they, they all have color work and I think when a project has color work, it almost instantly looks wintry, so I wanted a kind of a more urban hat. Um, and this one matches with my coat really nicely. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> so I will be figuring out the decreases and then, um, and then I'll be publishing it. I already know the name. This is going to be the Highland hat or the Highlander hat one of those because the color reminds me of uh, Scottish Highland cows um, or cattle I don't know what's the correct term and um, yeah and we are going to Scotland in May so I'll be able to wear it then see if I tilt it backwards you can barely see the um, <laughs> the weird point pointy endings yeah I really have to fix that but um, yeah it goes by really quickly if you've ever knit a hat you know how quick it is so uh, maybe I'll, I'll have the correct one already finished by the end of the day I don't know so um, yeah uh, but I'm, I'm just super excited about this yarn um, it's 100% recycled and it's also 100% natural. So it's a 75%, no, 70% um, recycled mulesing free wool or is it merino? Let me, um, yeah, 70% recycled mulesing free wool and then 30% recycled viscose. And viscose is uh, most often made from wood pulp, I think. It's some kind of like paper waste. Um, yeah, I don't know too much about that, but it's recycled. So that means it's already been used once and now it's getting um, used again. And it just feels really nice. Um, it's DK weight. Uh, let me give you the... Uh, so it's 50 gram ball and 175 meters per 50 gram ball. So that is 350... no? I'm trying to see what it's like per 100 grams. So it's a double... Um, yeah, that is 350 um, meters per 100 grams. So that is... Yeah, it's it's a it's a a little bit thinner DK weight, right? Ugh, I'm rubbish at math, but anyway, I'm super excited about it. And um, one thing that I noticed is that um, the tweed flex in here they are not coming out. So, and that might seem like you know, duh, it's not supposed to come out, but yeah, that's my point. So. Uh, there are lots of tweed yarns where the tweed bits are just, you know, you're able to pluck them right out or they fall off. And with this yarn, it's really just in there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, really, really pleased with this yarn. And uh, I can't wait to have a whole stash of it. And they have a color pack too. So uh, similar with, with Escapes Metropolis. They have 60 colors of this and the color pack has a 10 gram ball of each of those. So uh, yeah, really excited to get uh, my hands on one of those. Um, 
but yeah, I'll uh, keep you updated on the uh, hat, on the Highland hat. Uh, and now, because I have some other new yarn that I got from Nicole C. Mendez, um, and I ordered this almost as soon as I saw it, because uh, Nicole C. Mendez I keep saying, okay, I could just, I could just say Nicole instead of her full name, but uh, she's Nicole C. Mendez on Etsy. So Nicole, she, um, uh, she usually does self-striping yarn. I actually, I think this is a self-striping yarn, but uh, I don't know for sure. And uh, she often does clubs, so um, I think she had a Harry Potter club and um, a Bridgerton, I think. But anyway, now she has an Outlander club, so of course I had to, um, I had to get myself one of those sets. And it's it's a club, so um, I'm going to get three skeins, and this is the first one. And this is your warning if if you've ordered this and you don't want a spoiler. Um, I have not seen it, and I'm trying to. Um, just cut in the middle so that I can slide it aside a little bit and see the name of the colorway on the label. So <laughs> let's hope I don't cut into anything important, but I can feel the label with my scissors. So, right. Okay, I can see the label. Now let's find the colorway name because I I think uh, for these kind of themed yarns, I think the colorway name is always really really fun. Okay, I found a sticker. Okay, I think we can see it here. So I got the Strong Sock base, which is 75% uh, uh, virgin wool and 25% nylon, and it's 420 meters per 100 grams, and it's ooh. Okay, so the colorway day is Kraina Dunn. So for those of you who are not familiar, oh, I saw a little bit. For those of you who are not familiar with the Outlander story, um, Karina Dunn is a really a significant location in the story, um, and I'm wondering how much I should give away. Um, if you're planning to still watch the series or read the books, I would suggest just skipping uh, um, a minute ahead. But Karina Dunn, it's um, it's the place where Claire travels through time. So it's it's a circle of stones. It's kind of like the uh, like Stonehenge, but uh, yeah, it's a circle of really big stones. And uh, she touches a stone and falls back in time two hundred years. So um, and you know it's on this hillside. I think it's close to Inverness and uh, lots of greens. And yeah, I'm. <laughs> I am already seeing some greens. So yeah, let's just reveal. Oh my goodness. Look how pretty that is. And yes, I do think it's a self-striping club. Um, just, just look at that. And I am extra excited about this because the colors are all more or less the same saturation or the same hue, meaning there's not one uh, stripe in there that's like really dark suddenly, which means that you could also knit uh, color work with this. And um, I've done that before. Um, if uh, if you want to check out my striped and stranded socks pattern, that's really really fun, and uh, it's easiest to do with a sock um, a sock yarn that is kind of you know that has 
<laughs> how do I explain this? Uh, that's like all the colors in there are either light or all the colors in there are dark. So you can pair it well with one solid color that's going to be um, the one to contrast with all of them. So yeah, Kragna done. I am really excited to knit with this even though I know it will be a while because I have a lot of projects on the needles and I even <laughs> don't have any free needles at the moment in the size I want to use. So <sighs> lots of knitting ahead for me. Um, having said that, uh, I did have a knitting injury um, last week and it still hasn't gone away completely so I don't know why it's acting up now because it's not like I've been knitting more than usual but maybe it's because of the workshops uh, I've been showcasing more techniques on how to um, knit color work um, because now with continental style knitting uh, I'm really hurting my middle finger after a while because uh, when when I'm knitting I'm holding up my index finger so that I'm just holding my uh, my work with my thumb and middle finger and as I move the stitches on my needles I'm using my middle finger a lot and uh, yeah it's, <laughs> it's come to a point where um, uh, sometimes I couldn't pick up uh, a cup of tea without wincing it's like um, I have to notice when picking up something to pick it up with my index finger and not picking it up like this as I usually would because yeah it just hurts um, so yes <laughs> but it has uh, improved uh, because you know in all of these cases just take a break I know it's uh, the hardest uh, thing to do and um, you know if you want to knit to, to hear that you shouldn't knit right now uh, so instead I have been um, knitting English style and I've been using my um, is this called a thimble I don't know so uh, a yarn threader ring and you can use it for continental style knitting and I find that even though I'm still knitting continental style my middle finger is like whoa this is different I don't know what to do right now so I'm using it less <laughs> it's like um, yeah so um, I'm, I'm just changing the way I hold things slightly so that it doesn't impact my joints as much yeah anyway uh, I hope it will be better soon and yeah, I think that is all for this podcast episode. Um, of course, I have way more I want to say. But um, yeah, I'm going to keep it short for this episode just to ease back into things. And let's see how often I can <laughs> keep this up. Um, yeah, um, I don't even know how to end this anymore. So uh, if you're joining in the uh, Sassan Ahmed along, thank you so much. I'm enjoying it so much to see all of the photos and be sure to tag me on Instagram. Uh, that is if you don't have a private page because if you tag me and you have a private page then I still can't see it. Or you can share it in the Escapees Facebook group or in my Facebook group that's called New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew. Uh, or on Ravelry. It's really really appreciated if you add a project page on Ravelry. I know it's not accessible for everyone but Ravelry is still the platform where where I sell most of my, um, where I get most of the pattern income, uh, and it really, it's really, really helpful um, having lots of project pages on there because it's like a review. Um, if you go to a web shop and there are lots of positive reviews, that's like you know a Ravelry page with lots of uh, project pages linked to it. So yes, thank you all so so much. And I hope you are enjoying um, your knitting and uh, crochet projects and other crafty projects. And I hope to see you all next time. Bye-bye.